consider a moving frame within the Earth frame. So this inertial snail is actually on Earth, not moving relative to Earth. Okay, obviously Earth is moving, but relative to Earth, this inertial snail is not moving. Observes a moving frame, such as a boat or an airplane or a spaceship moving in space near Earth. And inside that moving frame, there's another particle that is also like an occupant of the spaceship moving within the moving frame. Okay. How do we actually um, analyze the motion right, relative to the Earth? Okay. So relative to the inertial snail, okay, this thing is moving at V. Okay. Let's say... Um, well, it doesn't always have to be like a spaceship with a person moving. It could also be like current, and this could be the boat in the water that has current, or this could be like the wind speed, and this could be the airplane. So it could be viewed at many different ways, okay? So let's say um, this object is moving at a certain velocity at v prime now this is v this is v prime and the moving frame itself is u not u as in y or u but like u okay so this v prime is velocity with respect to okay still air okay so let's say there's no wind at all whatsoever and we we could fly the airplane in a windless sky and that's velocity with respect to air. Okay, and that's what V prime is. U is basically wind, right? Or current of the water, right? Right, so water current, I guess you could think of it that way. Like stream or river or, right? Or oceanic current or like a ground moving right right like conveyor belt right? or like walking like moving sidewalk right right so you could even think about conveyor belt Okay, so if you're in an airport and you like walking on the, that conveyor belt of moving sidewalk, right, that would be the U, which is the speed of the conveyor belt. And this would be like V prime would be how fast you are walking on the conveyor belt, right? Um, if you were to walk on regular ground, that's the speed that you're going to be walking on the moving conveyor belt. And this would be the velocity that non-moving person or earth frame reference would be measuring of you walking on the conveyor belt, moving conveyor belt. Okay. If the conveyor belt is not moving, then your V prime and V would be the same. But if the conveyor belt is moving, then depending on which way you walk on that conveyor belt, it could be either, you know, addition of this or subtraction of this, 
right? In this particular case, since they're both going in the same direction, it would be addition of that. All right, so this is relative to the ground. Or we could simply say earth, right? Relative to the earth or relative to the ground. So we always have to have our reference point that we're measuring from. Okay? So V can always be represented as V prime plus U. Okay? V prime plus U. And this is very important. Make sure you understand that this. Now, these are vectors. So they don't always have to be going in a you know, single dimension. They could be moving in plane or in three-dimensional space for all three of these vectors. OK? So note the primed axis. This, this primed axis right here, note that, right, are always moving, and this is by convention, and it will also be true for modern physics and special relativity as well as general relativity. So you're already ahead of the game. Okay. So if we were to take a look at the position function position function is simply just position prime plus LX, all right? Or if you look at in the Y direction, position function of Y is Y prime plus LY, okay? This is the position relative to the moving frame. This is the position of the frame itself moving. And this is the position relative to the Earth. Okay. And, of course, this is the Y dimension of that. And change in position, obviously, is just change in X prime plus change in L, right? And similarly, for the Y, change in Y would be change in Y prime plus change in and if we divide all by delta t, basically, we get this particular equation that we already talked about. Make sure you understand what's, then, what's what, right? This is moving object within the moving frame of reference. And this is the velocity of the moving frame. And this is velocity observed by the Earth or stationary observer, okay? So V is velocity seen by the rest observer or Earth frame of reference. V prime is the velocity of the moving in the medium. So this is the object that is moving inside the moving medium. And then U would be the velocity of the moving medium, which is basically um, let's say this would be like the current this could be the boat in a still water and this is boats velocity respect to shore that's not right moving or this could be the wind velocity then this could be the velocity of the airplane in non windy day, still air, and then this is the velocity of the airplane respect to the Earth. Okay? So, so make sure um, you understand that difference. So here, this would be velocity okay, with respect to And with respect to can be, we're going to actually use with respect to as W dot R dot T, okay? That means with respect to. So we don't have to keep writing that all the time, right? T 
to still air or water. So if I'm talking about airplane, I'm talking about what the airplane's airspeed is without wind, without any tailwind, headwind, or crosswind. Okay. This U is like uh, current. Okay. Water current. Okay. Or wind speed. Right. Etc. And this would be as seen by rest observer, right? Or, or with respect to. Or Earth, okay. Alrighty. So now that I beat this to death, let me beat it to death even more. Okay. So the equation v is equal to v prime plus u is called the transformation. Okay, in math term, right? Transformation is like basically. We already know how to, to transform from um, one form to another, right? So, if we were to, because we can transform the equations from uh, equation of motion from an object in one frame of reference to equation of motion for the object motion in another frame of reference. Okay. Um, sometimes it's good to know how to transform from polar coordinate to Cartesian coordinate. And Cartesian coordinate to polar coordinate, etc. Right? So we all remember how to go the R cosine theta is the X, right? And Y is just R sine theta, right? So you could actually transform a lot of things, right? From polar to Cartesian, okay? So we can transform into many different forms to our convenience, basically. Okay. Now, if the acceleration of x prime and y prime axis is zero, okay, if there's no acceleration of the moving frame, okay, then delta u over delta t is also equal to zero, right? Then above transformation is called the Galilean transformation. So Galilean transformation is when delta v, no, delta u, delta u over delta t is equal to zero. Okay, no acceleration for the moving frame. Okay, for the moving frame. So we're not going to have like accelerating uh, airplane. So we're not really looking at this airplane when it's taking off, right? We're looking at the airplane when it's like just cruising uh, in a certain altitude. Or boat. It's not accelerating through water. It's just moving at a constant velocity. All right. So therefore, if we consider an airplane flying in the, in the wind, right? So here's the ground speed of the airplane, this V, speed relative to the ground. That's why it's called ground speed. Air speed is how fast the airplane is flying without the wind. Okay. And then U is the speed of the wind itself relative to the ground. Okay. So speed relative to the air versus speed relative to the ground are two different things. Make sure you understand the difference. All right. They also use different subscripts, but I prefer this because subscripts can sometimes confuse the, you know, 
exchange a lot more, I think. So I wouldn't even use this at all. All right. So velocity, right, of the particle with respect to Earth is what this PE means. And then velocity of the point particle with respect to moving frame and velocity of the moving frame with respect to Earth. Okay, so so this is basically V prime and this is U and this is V. Alright, so if you prefer this, it's okay with me as long as you don't get confused. Alright. But notice this and this is very important. Okay. And notice how these stay outside. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at some examples how this can actually work out. So, if we were to look at um, a practical use of Galilean transformation, here we go. A pilot wishes to fly his plane from city A to city B, which is due north of A. Right. So here's an airplane, right? And it's flying from point A to point B, city. Let me see if I can actually. Okay, here's point B, right? Suppose the speed of the plane relative to the air is 150 meters per second. So this is relative to air. So this is V prime. And the day of the flight, the wind is blowing from southwest at 25 meters per second. So this is U. A, what is the ground speed of the plane if the pilot heads the plane so that it travels due north relative to the ground? So since it's coming from southwest, from southwest, it is actually <laughs> southwest. Okay. All right. Anyway, uh, it's coming from southwest, so it's blowing up basically towards northeast. Okay. And since they didn't give us any exact angle, I'm going to assume that to be 45 degrees. All right. So if we want to go straight up north this way, and the wind is actually blowing this way, if I just aim my plane straight up north, my plane is going to drift because of the wind, and it's going to fly like this. Does that make sense? So you're not going to end up in the correct town. So in order to compensate for the wind, you would have to fly sort of into the wind so that the wind will drift you back on course. And so your plane will actually aim in this direction, right? So the wind can drift you back on course so it actually flies straight up north. Okay, so since we can say for part A, V is equal to V prime plus U, we can say that V prime has to be in somewhere in this direction like this. This has to be my V prime. And the wind will basically drift you back on course, and that's my U, so that my V can fly straight up north like that. So that's my V. Okay? So this can be broken up into right, X and Y direction. And the x direction is just v of x is equal to v prime of x plus u of x. 
the y direction, v of y is equal to v prime of y plus u of y. Okay, so here, if I look at my v prime, this will have both v prime y. I'm going to see if I could draw right next to it so I don't go over the pink v, right? So this is my v prime y, and this is my v prime x. And maybe I should have used different colors. Here's my u. Maybe I use u for the green. And my u will have uy, and then this would be ux. Now, obviously, ux plus v prime x, if I add them up, they should equal to zero. Okay? You can see that. All right? So, um, my vx has to be zero when I'm flying straight up. Okay? When I'm flying straight up. And... My V prime X, V prime X, I'm going to call this angle theta, right? So my V prime X is equal to V prime times sine of theta, because it's the opposite, right? And... Notice how the V prime X is pointing in the negative X direction. All right, so keep that in mind. So if you use the proper angle, it should be theta plus 90. But if you're using just this theta reference angle here, make sure you put that negative in there, okay? So here, this is equal to right, negative 150 because this is 150 here, right, times sine of theta is what we get. That's my V prime X. So let's put that in here, negative 150 sine of theta. Well, we know this angle to be 45 degrees here, right? That's, that's 45 degrees because we already established that up here. So here we can say my u of x is equal to right, u times cosine of 45 degrees. So my u of x is equal to 25 cosine of 45 degrees. All right. So here, since it's going in the positive direction, we'll make it positive. 25 cosine of 45. All right. So if I solve for just in the x direction, I could already say that oh, 150 sine theta has to equal to 25 cosine of 45 degrees. So, sine theta is equal to right, 25 cosine of 45 degrees divided by 150. If you solve for theta, you know how to do it, right? Sine inverse of all this mess, right? And if you do that, I think your theta comes out to uh, 6.768 degrees is what you're supposed to get, okay? So, oh, that's part B, okay? So, since theta here is 6.768 degrees, we can say, right, to be more precise, 
the bearing should be right 6.768 degrees west of north to be precise because the proper angle should be 96.768 degrees all right so for part a we're supposed to go for the ground speed ah, all right let's so here my vy is my v okay my vy is my v because there's no other component right so now that we have this we can figure out what my vy is so v prime y Let's do it down here. V prime Y is equal to V times cosine of theta, which is 150 times cosine of 6.768 degrees. Right? And that is... So 150 times cosine of 6.768, I get something like 148.955 meters per second. And, and my U of Y is equal to, right, 20 of U times sine of 45 degrees. And that is 25 sine of 45 degrees. So what is that? I get 17.68 meters per second. Right? So here, my V, which is V sub Y, is equal to V prime Y, which is... 148.96 plus 17.68. So my V is equal to uh, I guess 166. Point Six three meters per second, and that's pretty much straight out y hat. Okay, so the speed, ground speed, is equal to just one hundred sixty six point six three meters per second, and that's part A. All right, any questions? All right, Juliet is here, Alicia is here, and Caitlin's here. Okay, All right, I'll, I'll fix your, I'll fix your thing. All right, uh, Disha, you have a question? Well, since I want to fly straight up north, my resultant vector v right here doesn't have any x component at all. Right? So this is like basically V of X, and my V of X is zero, because I want to go straight up north like this. Does that? Yes, that makes sense. That makes sense, right? Because, because I'm going straight up north, and I don't have any X component of my V. Any other questions? Julieta, you had a hand, hand raised? I'm sorry? Louder. It wasn't? Okay. All right, good. Um, any other questions? All right, good. All right, then. Next. All right, two automobiles approach a uh, corner at right angles to each other 
with the same speed of 40 kilometers per hour or 11.1 .1 meters per second, right? Um, take a look at the figure below. Now, what is the relative velocity of one respect to another? All right. So let's take a look at um, what's going on. This car is moving this way at 40 kilometers per hour. This car is moving this way at 40 kilometers per hour. It doesn't matter if it's 600 meters or 800 meters, right? Whether this car is way up here or way down here, or way here, or this car will always be traveling in the south direction or negative y direction. Right, so relative to the, I'm going to say this is the policeman because I could see the like lights up here on top of the roof. Okay, so this is the po, and this is like the motorist. Okay, mo. All right, so po is watching mo coming, sort of like this in this direction. Right, but it doesn't matter where this car is located, whether it's here or here or here, it is still coming towards Y direction at 40 kilometers per hour, all right? Even here at 40 kilometers per hour. So whether it's approaching from way here, it is always going to be 40 kilometers per hour, no matter where this car at the mo is positioned okay so it's very important okay so we have to understand the coordinate system okay to determine what is the velocity of car one respect to car two so relative to po this motorist is coming this way at 40 kilometers per hour and relative to the police which is stationary now I'll put that in quote now stationary because this police is the earth observer therefore we have to give the velocity of the police to the motorist okay therefore this Relative to the police, this car is also approaching this way at you, keeping Po, right, zero. Okay, so if you were the police watching this motorist, even though you're driving at 40 kilometers per hour to the negative x direction, Relative to you, this car is coming at you in the x direction at 40 kilometers per hour. Are we okay with that? All right. And it is coming this way, which is the V prime. So relative to the police, right? What you're watching is you're watching V prime plus U because relative to the police, this car is coming towards the X direction at U. And this would be the V. This would be the V. So. Okay. So this Po becomes the inertial observer.
and the velocity right, AC of Mo, I guess, becomes the V vector. Okay, so this is Po, and this is Mo. Okay. Therefore, now this problem is very simple, really. Okay. You don't have to use these position to calculate the angle theta. We know this is 40 and this is also 40. So the angle here is actually 45 degrees. Okay. So V is equal to V prime plus U. So the magnitude of U is really is equal to uh, 40 kilometers per hour X hat, right? And this is 40 kilometers per hour Y hat negative. Okay, so here, um, if I add these up, the magnitude of my V is just simply square root of, right? I'm just going to get basically 40 X hat minus 40 Y hat for my V, right? So maybe if you want to write that down, you can do that. So we can say 40 X hat plus minus 40 y hat kilometers per hour is what my v is. Therefore, the magnitude of that is going to be just 40 squared plus 40 squared, which comes out to 56.569 kilometers per hour. So that's the magnitude of my speed of this motorist. So if he were to, or she, the police officer, uh, fires the you know, radar gun, this is the speed that police would, police would read. So you're, get, you're getting a ticket, okay? Because if it's 40, miles per, 40 kilometers per hour speed limit, you, you'll probably get a ticket, okay? You could fight that in court. The direction, obviously, theta is equal to, right? 10 inverse of, if you want this theta right here, that theta is 10 inverse of opposite, right, over adjacent, right? And that is, you know what it is, it's, it's 40 over 40, so that's 10 inverse of 1, right? And that comes out to 45 degrees. Okay, so this is the tricky part right here, giving the observer's velocity to the moving object and keeping the observer stationary that way. Julietta, now you have your hands up. I don't know. I'm not. A, I'm not part of a fraternal order of police, so I'm sure there is a way to calculate that. And since they are already moving, they if they're already in motion, like following you, and then they, shot, you know, shoot the uh, laser or the yeah, radar they, gun. I yeah, like I said, I honestly don't think they actually have accelerometers in the um, radar guns. 
Besides, accelerometer won't do anything because it only measures acceleration. And if the so most likely uh, there's always a fault. So if if the, if you are at an angle and police is like you know doing it, I guess it could slightly be off. But if the police is actually stationary, then it doesn't really matter. Then you're screwed either way. If the police is moving, then yeah, you could you could you could argue that. But if the police was at rest eating his donut, then then you have no case because there's no you. You know. Hopefully that answers the question. Does that answer your question? Yeah. All right. So we are um, we are finished as far as um, yeah we're finished. So any questions? So now let's take a look at your homework problems. If you could take a look at your homework problems, take it out. Let's go. And I'll let you guys work on your homework problems. Um, see if you can work on that right now. I'll give you some time. Matter of fact, um, I already posted this, I think, on Schoology, the homework solutions. All right, so you can always check. However, I would like to go over these problems because you're probably going to have to know how to do this for your quiz. Um, these two are easy. Twenty, uh, seventy-three, and twenty-two are pretty easy, okay? So I'm not going to waste time spending my time doing this. If I have time later, I'll, I'll come back to it. But for now, okay, let's take a look at this. Um, snow is falling vertically, okay, at a constant speed of 8 meters per second. So this snow falling down is your V prime. At what angle from the vertical the snowflakes appear to be falling as viewed by a driver of a car traveling straight road with speed of 50 kilometers per hour? So car is traveling 50 kilometers per hour this way, right? We should convert that into meters per second, okay? So if you do that, you just basically, you know, I guess you just divide by 3.6, right? Then you get 13.89 meters per second. So relative to the observer inside the car, this snowflake is actually coming this way. And we have to, just like the police problem, we have to give the velocity of the observer to the moving object and negative it. All right. So we have to say if this is V prime, are you, not, I'm not asking a question, I'm arguing with you. Our U is given to the snowflake in the negative direction as so. So relative to the observer inside a car, which we made the observer stationary now by giving the U, the negative U to the snowflake, this becomes the V of the snowflake relative to the stationary observer. Okay? So this is the negative U, basically. Okay? 
So this becomes eight meters per second, right? I guess negative y hat. And this becomes right, negative 13.89 meters per second, x hat. Okay. So you can calculate u okay, as negative of whatever the speed of the observer was, the velocity of the observer was going. Okay. So v is equal to right, negative 13.89 x hat minus 8y hat meters per second. All right? I mean, I guess we don't have to really... Do we, need to, do we need to know the magnitude? I guess we could calculate the magnitude, right? So speed is what the magnitude is, I guess, right? So if you want to, you can. This becomes basically straight out... Um, 13.89 squared plus 8 squared. So the speed of this snowflake is going to be 16.03 meters per second. And the angle that snowflake makes with vertical, right? So this is the angle they want. So the theta is equal to now, I label my theta right there, so I can work as a reference angle. It's 10 inverse of, right? opposite over adjacent. So the theta comes out to, if you work it out, I think you get 60.1 degrees. Okay. So make sure you see that. That's the important point here. You're giving the observer's velocity, not just speed, the direction as well, the opposite of that to the moving object in order to keep the observer stationary. Okay? Stationary as in quotes. Okay? Let's take a look at the next problem. Two ships, okay, A and B, leaves, they, they both leave port at the same time. Ship A travels northwest at 24 knots, and ship B travels 28 knots, in the direction 40 degrees west of south. So this is 40 degrees right here. Okay. One knot is one nautical mile, which is about um, 1.15 miles per hour. Okay. Um, what are the magnitude and direction of velocity of ship A relative to ship B? So they want to know if the B is observing A, what would it look like from the observing point of B observing the ship A? So we should give the velocity of B and negative it and give it to A to make the B, ship B, stationary, right? Are we okay with that? Okay. So, if I were to give B to negative B's velocity to A, so this is my V prime relative to my ship B, and... Uh, what is that about? One and a half. So. so this would be my I guess 
u, right? This would be my u relative to my v. Okay? So, the observ observation, now I don't know how much this is. Hold on. Let me just measure this. Here. I don't know if this is thing is measuring its scale, so I don't want to confuse you. I don't want to confuse you saying that this is the exact angle. So I don't know if that's, like, I don't know if this is drawn to scale. All right. So this would be, this would be V. Okay. Because this is the velocity of the observer, and I'm going to give negative of that, which is this onto my A as U. Okay? All right. So now we can actually calculate the components of V prime and U and work that out. All right? So if I were to look at this angle right here, You know that this has to be 40, because this is parallel. So this has to be 40. That means this has to be 50 degrees. It's a complementary angle. Okay? So you can get the UX. And UY. Right? And of course, VX or V prime X, I should say, V prime X and V prime Y is just straight out 45 degrees. Okay? So let's calculate these components. So what's my UX? My UX is U times cosine of 50 degrees, which is um, um, what is U? Um, 28? Yeah, 28, right? So 28 times cosine of 50 degrees. And what is that equal to? Um, Eighteen point zero nautical miles walked, right? And then U Y is U sine of fifty, and that is twenty eight sine of fifty degrees, and I get uh, twenty one point five, twenty one point four five, and not right and let's take a look at the v prime x which is v prime uh, cosine of 45 degrees okay and v prime y is v prime sine of 45 degrees and that is uh, 24 cosine of 45, and that is uh, 16 or 17.0 nautical miles or knots, right? And, of course, the same for the Y, right? This is 45 degrees. All right? So if we add them up, right, if we add them up, 
my v is equal to, right, v prime plus u. So if I add the x's together, right, so my v is equal to this plus this will give me my x's. Oh, by the way, this v prime x is negative. This is going in the negative x direction. I forgot to add that. Sorry. So this looks like um, 1 x hat plus the other one looks like uh, 38 point four five y hat all right so if I were to take a look at um, the actual magnitude of that okay it is simply one square plus thirty eight point squared and then I get I get 38.5 right knots that's the magnitude of that object right the theta is equal to, so this is the theta, I guess, right here, right, is equal to 10 inverse of, um, I guess, opposite, which is 38.45 over adjacent 1, and what is that? So 10 inverse of, 38.45 divided by 1, and I get 88.5 degrees, right? So 88.5 degrees north of east is what the bearing is, okay? So if you were to look at this, this is the bearing, right? And what time would it be? Well, if we were to take a look at speed is equal to distance divided by time, okay? Well, we know the speed, which is 38.5, right? And Distance happens to be 160 uh, naut nautical miles, right? Therefore, time is equal to, uh, I guess, 160 divided by 38.5, and that comes out to 4.16 hours okay 4.6 hours all right or 4 hours and 9.6 minutes four hours and ten minutes. All right. Any questions? Okay, then let's take a look at, since we have time, let's take a look at these two homework problems right here. Um, so here, a boat is traveling upstream 
at 14 points, uh, 14 kilometers per hour. Right? So we're going to consider this is the upstream. Okay. which is positive x-axis. So this is 14 kilometers per hour. And that's my V prime. That's the boat speed, right? Respect to water, right? The water itself is flowing 9 kilometers per hour. So this is U, right? And this looks like, since we're going to call this positive direction, this looks like positive X hat. And since this is going in the opposite direction, we could call that negative X hat. Okay? And since v is equal to okay, v prime plus u what is the velocity of the boat respect to the ground respect to the ground right so this is the observer v is what they're looking for so my v is equal to V prime, which is 14 X set plus negative 9 X set, and I get um, positive 5 kilometers per hour X set as my. Right. Now, a child on the boat, there's a child here, walks from the front of the boat to the rear, right, with respect, six kilometers per hour. So now this child is seen walking this way at six kilometers per hour. Now, this is my new V prime, and this, since the boat is now moving at this, this becomes my new U. Well, not U, but new U. Okay? So... Now, this becomes the moving frame, and this becomes the particle that's moving in the moving frame. Okay? So, I'm going to say my V is equal to V prime plus U U. So, we can say uh, V prime is negative 6 kilometers per hour x hat. Right, negative. So, negative 6 x hat plus U is positive 5 kilometers x hat. All right? Therefore, my velocity of the child with respect to the ground, respect to shore, is actually negative 1 kilometers per hour x hat. Okay? So this is child with respect to ground.
This is boat with respect to boat. All right. Any questions so far? All righty then. We may even have a chance to do the other clown. All right. So here, we have two trains approach each other on a parallel track. Each has a speed of 80 kilometers per hour with respect to Earth. Right? So now Casey Jones right, coming towards each other. So here, now... If they are initially 10 kilometers apart, how long will it be before they pass each other? Okay. Um, this is really a trivial, right? This is really trivial. So relative to KC right here, this, we're going to do the relative to this person. Okay. Well, since... This train is going at 80 kilometers per hour. We're going to give the relative um, velocity of this, of the observers, to the negative of that to my other U. And relative to this conductor, this train is going with V prime. And of course, V prime is negative 80 kilometers per hour, and U is also negative 80 kilometers per hour. And the distance, now we have this observer at rest. Okay, and I'm putting that in quotes again at rest because. Now we gave the velocity, negative velocity of the observer to the moving object. We could keep this observer at rest. Okay? So we can actually now calculate V of this respect to this observer as okay, V prime plus U, right? And of course, this is very simple. This is negative 80 plus negative 80, which is simply negative 160 kilometers per hour, etc. Right? Therefore, therefore, since V is equal to d over t, right? They're kilometers apart, which is 10 kilometers apart. So 160 is equal to 10 over t. So t is equal to right? 10 over 160. And that is 0. 0.0. 625 hours. Or, if you multiply that by 3,600, you get 225 seconds. All right. All right. I think we're done. So, um, if there are no questions, I'm going to end it there. Oh, um, the multiple choice. If you take a look at this multiple choice, here are the, all the uh, answers, if you didn't see that. All right. So, yeah, you're welcome. All right. So make sure you check your understanding doing the multiple choice without looking at the answer key, hopefully. And then you should be able to uh, check your understanding that way. Okay?
If there are no questions, I will end my lecture here. Uh, you can print out your um, chapter test and start working on it. And then upload it by latest Sunday midnight. If you could actually do it by tonight, actually it'd be better because then I could actually grade everything over the weekend. Yeah, let's do that. Let's make it Friday, today, midnight. All right.